Okay, so folks, we're finishing up uh, the idea of function composition here before we can jump into the chain rule. So I just want to show you uh, how we can think of uh, two, you know, we can be given one function here and we can think of it as its two pieces. So I want you to, given this function f of x, I want you to think of it as f of g of x. I'm missing a parenthesis there. So for this, you have to identify the two parts, the inside piece and the outside piece, and you have to do it correctly so that when you compose the two pieces, the outer function would be the f of x. So in this case, let's jump to it. In this case, the outside function could be thought of as the cosine of x, and then that would make the inside function g of x the function x squared plus 1. So if you want, uh, take the moment to find f of g of x, and notice that if you found f of g of x, that is, you took the cosine of x function, and everywhere you saw an x, you replaced it with g of x, you would indeed get our capital F of x here. So the order matters. I'm going to do this the wrong way first. Let's suppose we thought that the outside function was x plus 2 here, and then that the inside function was x to the 100th minus 5. Okay. Well, if you compose these in a certain way, you will get the right answer. But notice that in this case, f of g of x does not equal f, capital F, even though um, g of f of x equals capital f of x. Uh, f of x. So that's uh, that goes back to the idea that order matters with function composition. So I'm out of room here, so I'm going to go ahead and clear this out, but maybe you still got room. I'm going to go ahead and give the correct answer here. Then our outside function, and, and by the way, these are not unique answers, so this is not the only answer to this problem, but I'm going to think of the outside function as x to the 100th power minus 5, and then the inside function as x plus 2. And we see then if I input x plus 2 into x in the function for f of x, we do indeed get the capital F of x formula. So we're going to do a few more of these. And as I said, there are many viewpoints, and I want you to practice looking at this through a few different viewpoints. That will make you a little bit more fluent when we get to the chain rule. So one way, so this is just one way, we could think of this as being a composition of functions, is to say, let's call the outside function the cube root of x minus 3. Well, if that's the case, then that would make the inside function x minus 1 to the fifth. And notice if I input the, in, the inside function, g of x, in for x here, I will end up with the expression for capital F. So I want you to, to uh, come up with another way of doing this, so that'll be for you to do. So now that we've reviewed function composition, we're ready to talk about how, how do you take derivatives of composition of functions. Okay, so there's not much to the statement of the chain rule. The chain rule says that it, suppose you've got some function that is a composition of two functions, and uh, both of them are differentiable in their required places. Then the composition is also differentiable. This new function created from composing f and g is differentiable. And its derivative is given by this expression here. Its derivative is, and here's how I'll say it, it is the derivative of the outside function. The outside function was f of x. It's the derivative of the outside function evaluated still at the inside function. And then we times that by, or we multiply that by the derivative of that innermost function. Okay. So uh, let's put that into practice. Uh, we're going to take the derivative of this. I say first identify the f and g so that you can do the chain rule. I think that's really helpful. So we could think of f of x, the outer function, as the square root of x function. We know how to take its derivative. And we could think of g of x as the x squared plus 3x function. And I usually go with what I call the most natural choice for the inside-outside functions uh, in that composition. So then when we go to find f prime of x, just following the uh, rule above, I'm just recopying this rule above. Okay? So it says take the derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inner function. We know that the derivative of the square root function is 1 over 2 times the square root of x, but I'm going to evaluate it at g of x. 
So um, let's just take, we'll pause here, we'll put, a, we'll put a g of x here, and then we'll multiply that by g prime of x. Okay, so that's what the chain rule says we can do. Take the derivative of the outer function, so the derivative of the square root would be 1 over 2 radical, evaluated at the inner function, times the derivative of that inner function. But we actually know what g of x is, and we know what its derivative is, so we could simplify this further. And by the way, I, I don't usually show this middle step. I don't usually do this middle step, but it's a nice pause for the first time. Uh, anyway, we get 1 over, I'm going to run out of room here, we get 1 over 2, g of x was x squared plus 3x, so there's g of x, and then we multiply all of this by the derivative of g of x. Well, the derivative of g of x is 2x plus 3, and there we've taken the derivative uh, using the chain rule. Okay. So I'm going to quickly do these, uh, these problems here in number 10. Um, I encourage you to uh, uh, pause the video and try them on your own, um, but I'm going to go ahead and give you these solutions so you can check you can check them uh, before you come to class. So f prime of x here would be uh, minus the sine of 3x to the fifth times 15x to the fourth, or minus 15x to the fourth sine of 3x to the fifth. And I'm just going to work through these, folks. I'm not giving much explanation. I'll let you think about the explanation, and then I'll happily go over this as we work through the in-class work. So the derivative of this would be uh, the sine of x squared times 2x, or 2x sine of x squared. Okay. So there's two ways to do this one. Uh, I'm going to do it first with the chain rule. So the derivative of the sine squared of x, I'm going to write as, oh, by the way, this is actually a really important point. Remember that sine squared of x is really just mathematical shorthand for the sine of x quantity squared. So the outer function is a squared function, so the derivative will be 2 times the sine of x just to the first power. In fact, I'll even write that. Times, and then the derivative of the inside function will be cosine x. So that was one way to do that. Let me do that a second way. Let me clean this up. A second way to do this is to actually rewrite the original function as the sine of x times the sine of x, and then we're going to uh, multiply this with the, by. We're going to find the derivative by the chain rule. So there's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second. times the derivative of the first, and we end up with a sine cosine x, and that's another sine x cosine x for a total of 2 sine x cosine x, giving us the same answer that we had before in C. Okay. Continuing, okay, this, this pair of problems, C, uh, D and E, are interesting because I've switched the inner and the outer function in each of them. The derivative of the sine of an expression is just the cosine of that expression. But because we had, in place of x here, we had an expression more complicated than x, we need to do the chain rule. So we multiply this by the derivative of that interior expression. But that's just the derivative of the x is just e to the x. Okay, let's try that again. So here we're going to say, well, what's the derivative of e to an expression? Well, it's just e to that expression. But then by the chain rule, we have to multiply by the derivative of that expression. That gives us e sine x times the cosine of x. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and do letter f. Okay. The derivative of the secant of an expression is the secant of that expression times the tangent of that expression but then because this expression was more complicated than just an x, we have to multiply by its derivative. So that gives us, I'm going to go ahead and bring that out front, 3x squared secant x cubed tangent x cubed. Okay. And so the last thing I want to talk about here, oh, oh by the way, uh, please, I went through those extremely quickly. Here is the work, but I want you to slow down and work through these on your own. Um, but I did go through those very quickly. 
but the last thing I want to talk about then is why is this called the chain rule? So here I'm thinking about capital F of X, and now look, look what I've got. I've got three functions, one nested within the other. Uh, so we've got two compositions because we've got three functions. So we're going to have to do two chain rules here. Okay. So when we go to find the derivative, the chain rule says to take the derivative of the outside function, leaving the inner function alone, in this case g of h of x. So the outside function is f of x, we've taken its derivative, leaving the inside piece alone, but then we need to multiply that by the derivative of that inside function. Yeah. Well, let's keep going. So this is f prime g of h of x times, what is the derivative of this? Well, here we're going to take the, oops, um, folks, that's an error. I went a little fast on that. I'm going to do the derivative of, uh, of g. So this gives us then the derivative of g would be g of, and then I'm going to write h of x, leaving the inside piece alone. So I'm doing my second chain rule here. But then by the chain rule, I have to multiply by the derivative of h of x. And so at long last, we get f prime of g of h of x times g prime of h of x times h prime of x. And so the motion I want you to think about here is I took the derivative of the outside piece and then I left the inside piece alone, but then I sort of popped that out, again taking the derivative of that outside piece, leaving the inside piece alone, then I pop that out and take the derivative of the inside piece. And this is sort of a visualization, I think, that helps to explain why we call it the chain rule. Uh, anyway, I did that very quickly. Um, specifically, I went through these uh, uh, examples A through F very quickly. Please take your time to go through them slowly and compare your answers to what I got, and we'll see you in class next time.